guys welcome back to Aunt Susie's kitchen today we're going to make peppers and onions with eggs and potatoes this is a dish that I practically grew up on it was always something that we would have on Fridays during Lent because you couldn't eat meat and it was actually my dad's favorite dish to have even when we could eat meat so let's go ahead and get started I have uh, diced up an onion here set that over to the side I have my electric skillet on a medium high heat and I'm going to just put a couple of tablespoons of oil inside the pan and let that go ahead and heat up and then I'm just going to chop up some peppers you can use whatever peppers you have on hand or whatever you prefer I actually happen to have um, these peppers on hand so this is what I'm going to use and uh, I like the different colors of peppers because each of them have their own flavor Obviously, the green bell um, has a very distinct flavor, as does the red. But these yellow and orange peppers are just a little bit sweeter than the uh, red and the green. And so I like to use them whenever they're available. They're just, they're not always available. And I find that sometimes when they are available, they're super expensive. Um, so watch for them to go on sale. Sometimes you can get them in a bag of, uh, you know, like they'll give you an orange, a red, and a yellow for like three or four dollars, and that's a good buy. So these two pieces right here, this is habanero. Um, we like a little heat. My dad never liked heat, so my mom didn't put a lot of spice in our food when we were kids growing up. But as I got older, I really learned to appreciate flavorful heat. And habanero has beautiful, beautiful, flavorful heat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use those very two small pieces that you saw. Maybe I have the equivalent of a teaspoon or a teaspoon of a, and a half, and I'm just gonna put them in. Uh, make sure you wash your hands when you're working with hot peppers. This would not be a good time to touch your face, especially your eyes. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get this cooking. This is a really quick recipe. Um, which is what I like about it. My mom would be able to come home from work on a Friday night and throw this together in no time at all. So this is the peppers and the onions, including the habanero. I'm gonna turn that gas up just a little bit because those peppers and onions were cold and uh, they're gonna drive the temperature in the pan down really quickly and I don't want that to happen, so. Now, I know uh, when I'm cooking with peppers, I try not to overcook them because they get soggy and they fall apart. Uh, I like to have a little bit of crunch to them. I'm just gonna add about uh, a teaspoon of salt at this point and some fresh cracked black pepper. If you didn't have a habanero in the house, you could use some hot pepper flakes. That would work also. Now, in the meantime, what I did before we got started is I took two large baking potatoes. I peeled them. I sliced them in chunks about this big. I put them in a little bit of water, and I put them in. I have a portable convection oven. I put them in the convection oven. I want them to cook a little bit and soften up, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add them to this, um, and we'll brown them all together. Oh, it smells good in here already. I love the way uh, peppers and onion smell when they're cooking. Really have a great scent and um, mm, so flavorful. Okay, so we're gonna get, let these cook for a few minutes. I'm gonna put the lid on, but I'm gonna leave it ajar because I want the steam to escape. Um, I don't want to completely cover it because I don't want the moisture to stay inside. I want the moisture to evaporate so that this is dry because if you add eggs to a wet atmosphere, they're gonna cook funny. So we're gonna give this, uh, I'm gonna turn it down just a little because I want them to cook slowly. And I want all of the steam and all of the excess water in there to evaporate. There's a lot of water in peppers and onions. Uh, turn the gas down or turn the heat down a little bit and let them go ahead and cook I'm gonna say for about three or four minutes, I'm gonna go grab those potatoes and then we'll come back and uh, we'll get the eggs ready. Okay, so it's been about four minutes and these peppers and onions look great. A lot of the condensation that was in here and the liquid that was in the peppers and the onions have cooked out because I had the lid ajar. I'm actually at this point gonna go ahead and turn them down because I wanna prep 
I'll leave that ajar still. I want to prep the eggs and I want to grate some cheese. Now, my mom never put cheese in hers. Maybe a little bit of Parmesan, but she never really put um, cheddar in it like I'm going to. And that was her preference. We were a very large family growing up. I was one of seven. So I would imagine a block of cheddar would have been a delicacy item that we probably always didn't have. So as I've grown older and I have really learned to appreciate everything that my mom did with food and how she was able to feed every single night there were 10 of us for dinner. So you can imagine what a production that was like. <laughs> um, seven kids, her and my dad, and my grandmother also lived with us. So um, I have a great respect for large families because I know firsthand what goes into feeding uh, a family that large um, with obviously a budget that isn't as large as the family. So kudos, mom. I don't know how you did it. I sometimes have a hard time with three children, let alone um, seven of them. So, okay, so that probably is gonna yield us maybe, here, I'll pull it out so you can see. That was probably about maybe five ounces of cheddar and it's probably about two and a half cups there that we have. Um, I'm gonna just put that to the side for now because I wanna get the eggs ready. I'm just gonna beat the eggs lightly, nothing crazy. Uh, for this dish, I'm gonna use a half a dozen eggs. Um, it's just for me and my husband, but we love to have leftovers. So these are large eggs. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of cream to this. I don't because I think the cheese makes it rich enough. And, oops, did you ever get an egg that just doesn't want to crack? That's not a good thing. So what we'll do is we'll use a piece of the shell. Shell, for some reason, always seems to be attracted to shell. Look how easy that was. If I would have tried to do that with a fork, it would have never come out. And I think I see a piece hiding there on the bottom. Same thing, came right into the shell, awesome. Okay, so this one stubborn egg is really giving me a hard time. Okay, there we go, perfect. So now a very little bit of salt. Oh, what? <laughs> it's like the magic egg. Where are these shells coming from? Perfect, okay. So we're really cooking here, folks. As you know, we don't uh, stop and edit these videos because editing is not my gig. Cooking is my gig, so if you promise to bear with me while real life things happen while we're cooking. I promise to keep bringing you real life videos. Okay, perfect. So that's it, just beat that a little bit. You don't wanna beat it too much. You don't wanna overbeat it. I'm gonna put that to the side. And now I'm gonna go and grab those potatoes because they are ready. Okay, so I have those potatoes and I just strained them. Cause again, I don't wanna bring any more water to this party. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, nice. Now the potatoes are not completely cooked. I did that on purpose. I didn't want them mushy or falling apart. I want them to brown a little bit. And I want them to finish cooking inside the pan. They definitely need a little salt. So I'm gonna say, about a teaspoon of salt. Potatoes really soak up salt. So make sure that you taste them throughout and that you have enough seasoning. Remembering you can always add more. You can't take it out if you put too much in, so don't be too aggressive with it. But as a rule, I find that potatoes usually take more salt to properly season than just about any other vegetable. Maybe rice would maybe be the next um, thing that I would say would take as much salt. Because for some reason it just, it, it brings really minimal flavor to the party and it needs to have that salt to bring out all of this, uh, all of this components. So I'm gonna put this lid on. This time I'm gonna put it on tight because I want those potatoes to steam a little bit. So maybe about 
four minutes, not much longer, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get the eggs in there. Okay, so these potatoes have been cooking for about five minutes. I'm going to just test them because I want to make sure that they are soft enough. Potatoes are not something you want to eat with a little bite in them like you do pasta. <laughs> Al dente potatoes, not good. Okay, good. These are good. These are actually perfect. So something else I did um, off camera, I decided to put two more eggs into this mixture. So now this is a total of eight large eggs. And I did that because I made more potatoes than I realized. And when I looked in the pan, I thought, mm, I don't want the potatoes to really overpower the eggs. I want there to be a nice balance. So I'm gonna turn this gas down a little bit on the low side. And I'm just going to pour the eggs in. Mmm. Yum. And you hear how that went from a sizzle to a very quick stifle. So that tells me that the eggs were colder than the pan was hot. So I'm going to turn the temperature up just a little bit. And I'm going to put the lid on. Because I want the eggs to set. I don't want to start stirring them just yet. Um, because I want to see chunks of egg and the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we start to you know if we allow the eggs to set a little bit um, so that's it this is probably going to take about two or three minutes for the eggs to start to set I'm going to go grab some amazing Italian bread and I'm going to come back and we're going to put the cheese in there and we're going to bring this all together Okay, so it's been about three minutes. I'll peek in there. Ooh, that looks nice. So around the edges where the heating element is, the eggs are setting very nicely. And of course, in the center where the heating element is not, they're still a little bit runny, but that's okay because we're gonna give them a toss. They'll finish in no time like this now, now that we've moved them around. So this is a good opportunity to go ahead and Put that cheese on there. And this is a preference. We like cheese. So we tend to be a little heavy handed, especially with cheddar. So I'm probably going to use all of that cheese that I shred before, which is fine. Then I'm gonna put the lid back on this. Here it coming back up to temperature. Might turn the gas down just a little bit because now what I'm looking to do is just Melt the cheese, finish cooking those eggs, but I definitely don't want to overcook them. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. I can hear the activity inside the pan slowing down a little bit, which tells me that a lot of the liquid is gone and the eggs are cooked. So I'm actually going to turn the heat off completely. Oh, look at that. Can you get a good view of that because that looks amazing and the only thing that is left to do now is to grab some really nice Italian bread like I have here and make a sandwich so now you can definitely toast the bread if you'd like these rolls literally are bakery fresh they're from this morning from the bakery so there's no need to they're, they're so soft oh I wish you could really get an idea of how soft they are. And so this is how we like to do it. I like to hollow it out just a little bit, top and bottom, not too much, because you know, the bread is really as delicious as the filling. But I want to do that so that when I close the sandwich and I cut it and I bite it, everything doesn't come squishing out the sides. So. Don't throw that bread away. Dry that bread out, put it in your mini chopper, make some fresh bread crumbs. Thank you later. Okay, back over here to this. Look at this, look at that. Can you see that? Oh man. Now a lot of times, and almost all the time, when you guys see me bringing you a video, Know that dinner is right on the other end of this. <laughs> so my husband is upstairs patiently waiting for me to tell him, look at that, that the coast is clear and he can come down and eat. 
Um, but look at this. Oh, so good. You can definitely um, grab the ketchup if you'd like. I love eggs. And I have this little joke that I put ketchup on my ketchup because I love it so much. But I promise you, it really doesn't need it. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, okay. So come on back over here for a quick second. I want to cut one of these and I want to show you what I was meaning when I was saying that I wanted to have it be so that when I close the sandwich, see that? All of that delicious filling is inside and you don't have to worry about it falling out. If I would have just left the bread the way it was, when I closed the sandwich, everything would have fallen out of it. So, here we go. We'll put this here, like this. Let you take a look at that. Ugh. I'm almost afraid to bite it because I'm sure it's gonna be very hot, but have to, you know, for research purposes, I have to try this. Mm. <laughs> oh man, even better than I remembered when I was a kid. Sorry, mom. That cheddar cheese takes it to a whole new level. Mm, look at that. And I can taste the peppers and the onions. The potatoes are cooked perfectly. They're not too soft, but they're also not hard at all. So guys, all joking aside, this is an easy to make meal. These hold beautifully if you want to pack a box lunch for your husband, your kids, your wife, whatever. Make these, they will thank you. Your kids will thank you. Look at that, mm. friends and family. These would be beautiful. You can cut these even further. And if you are doing a brunch, Stack these on a platter in smaller bite-sized pieces. Serve them at a brunch. They'll be a hit, I promise you. Alrighty, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to like and share. I love your comments. I love your constructive criticism. Uh, please be kind because that's all we have in this world is each other. So be kind and uh, definitely check us out on Facebook. Come and see us over on Instagram. Make sure you come back here to YouTube and see us again because there's always something good cooking in Aunt Susie's kitchen.